Hi, I'm Sarah from the upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, Thank you. you can kick off with a brief introduction to this incredible new series. Um, what can audiences expect when they watch Django? I don't know who wants to kick off. <laughs> first, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, that you. Um, okay, I think you can expect a series where um, you get to see a lot of complex characters thrown into this wild west world and there's a lot of love and a lot of um, grief and a lot of um, feelings involved that get mixed up and people really fight for their past and for their future. And you've both got really incredible, fascinating characters. Maybe you can tell us a bit about each of them and how you prepare to play them. Um, maybe you want to go first, Nicholas? Yeah, John is, um, he's a wonderful, complex, fiery, yet sensitive soul. He is constantly on his fight for doing the right thing and justice. And along the way, he finds himself maybe not able to stick to the moral high ground that he set himself in the beginning. And so in and among that, you have this very changeable, complex human being with morals right in the center and understanding that how you feel about something changes and he's finding what those changes are. And he's trying to navigate his way with having this stranger come into to the city and having to navigate the shifting relationship with this girl that he has adopted and she, you know the navigation of this nemesis that wants his land all of a sudden and so all of these things are piled on top of him while trying to maintain his freedom and keep new babylon safe and look out for his sons really erupts a lot of you know powerful unseen facets of his personality that even John wasn't aware of. Lisa, what can you tell us about, about Sarah? Yeah. And her. yeah, I think that's something that Sarah and John really connect us their morals and their ideals, and they fight together for the, the goal to build this utopian town where people can be equal and live their life and be, um, you know, no matter where they come from or if they're female or male or whatever, that they all can, um, yeah, live freely. Um, and she comes from a big place of trauma and had to grow up really fast and, yeah, became a very strong and independent woman. Um, and she still has a lot of flaws and um, she tries to do the right thing thing and doesn't always do the right thing but she she has her ideals very you know in front of her and she she fights for them with all that she has and yeah together with with John and it does feel like the western genre is having a bit of a renaissance I mean thinking of that incredible film The Harder They Fall um The English uh, you know another incredible series and now this one, um, and of course it's, you know, drawing on the story from, from the 1960s film, but it's a very much contemporary lens and, you know, particularly um, a lot of subversion of stereotypes in terms of the male and female characters. Um, and, you know, lots of things are drawing on the tropes of the genre, but given a, a fresh makeover. So what was maybe the appeal for you? coming on board and were you already fans of the western genre had you already seen a lot of films from the past and, and what really stood out for this script i um i was a fan of the western genre i grew up in a time where every saturday morning there was a western on tv on bbc2 and you would sit and watch it and so you know you you yeah that's where i got my love of horses um, and my love of wanting to be a cowboy um, if you look at my social media, you, you will, my handle is um, uh, something like I often dream of, you know, I, I daydream of being a cowboy. Um, 
So it's definitely been in my, you know, in my psyche. And when you consider that 80% of the Western genre had never been told because 80% of cowboys were African-American, Native American and Mexican. So that chunk of the Western genre had never been told before. And that was definitely something that appealed, appealed to me when you, know, you have a character like John Ellis who is this cowboy right in the thick of everything. It really, um, it really spoke to me and thought, okay, this is this is a time to, to tell, you know, more than the twenty percent that we've had from the European perspective, which I think is great, and I don't want it, I don't want that to go anywhere. But we can now add to um, what we've all known that genre to be. But then on top of that, you add the female dynamic, where you know in westerns in the past women have always been subservient in some way. And, and if they haven't been subservient, they've been a problem because they've been front footed and they've been, you know, they've had their own voices and stood up for themselves and they've been, you know, been hysterical in some kind of a way. And the way that we had painted women from, you know, the polarized version of really weak or too strong, they're a problem, I thought was um, dealt with so well in this, in these scripts. It was, you know, women had, agency they had a reason for being and they weren't questioned and they shouldn't be questioned and so a mixture of those two things were my main um hooks for wanting to be involved for sure and for you lisa and then yeah i guess in particular you know how, how strong your character is and then newman pace's character actually you know it's a woman kind of most holding up the patriarchal kind of traditions mm -hmm. so, so that's kind of going against our expectations as well so, so what was that like for you yeah, I can agree on a lot of things that Nicholas just said, but um, I mean, I wasn't, I, I didn't grow up with Westerns that much because maybe I was born later and it wasn't like a big thing in, our, in my family. Um, but in in the preparation pro process, I, I watched a few spaghetti Westerns and I really, something that really stood out was that the female characters was really, they didn't have a lot of agency and they didn't have, um, their own voice and they mainly just were very beautiful women who needed to be rescued by a man and that um, yeah were just on the side and didn't really they weren't really cowgirls or cowboys or um, so I was really surprised or happy about our scripts that we have these complex characters as well for male as for a female characters and it was a lot of fun to play and also strong female characters doesn't mean that they have to be perfect or that they just need to you know be strong all the time they can have their weaknesses and it's it's human to have weaknesses and it's interesting if they have weaknesses um but um they they need to have a voice and that's something we i think we did in our show and, you know, just kind of the scale of the production, the fact they've got this incredible multinational cast, um, with Nimmer Pace and Matthias gives an incredible performance, but also the sets, you know, and, you know, saying we've, it's, it brings something fresh to the genre, but we've also got those things that we do expect, you know, the incredible landscapes, um, the shootouts, the horse riding. So what was it like being on this set and what were some of the highlights? It was amazing because we had this huge set that they built for New Babylon. So like this town was basically there. It was like entering the real town. And we had a lot of great extras who worked so great to like fill the space and they were so into it and they really helped to bring the city to life. And um, for example, the big house that we live in, the Ellis house, it's like, it has two floors. It's, it's like 3D and I, we didn't have to imagine the space because it was there and it felt real and the costumes felt real and everything helped to really support this environment. And additionally, like Romania is a beautiful country. We had these beautiful landscapes that we could use. And um, yeah, in the end, I, I, I never had to question New Babylon as a town because it was just right there and we could uh, fill the space and act in it, which was like a big, big privilege. And the production design team did such a great job. Um, almost at time, but maybe you could just 
um, say a word or two as well about even though it's like, you know, 1800s post-Civil War in the US, there's so much there that's relevant to today in terms of um, inclusivity and kind of having that ideal where everyone can be equal and we're still working towards it in lots of ways. Yeah, well, you've got a show that tackles modern themes just set in a, the ear of a Western. I mean, and that's the appeal of the show, that people now in 2023 who are going to be watching it will identify with things and you wouldn't have to have known about the genre and you wouldn't have to have lived in that time because we're tackling so many things that are, you know, current events today and, you know, things that, uh, that we still are struggling with because we're basically human beings and unfortunately we haven't evolved as much as we would like to think we have mm. so um a lot of those um those themes are still we're still dealing with so yeah i'm out of time but thank you so much for sharing all that with me